Grace and mercy and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The words of Scripture for us to consider today, this, this Sunday that goes with the 4th of July holiday, as we consider our place in this world underneath God, but also in the nation in which we are blessed, you'll note that I am standing on the opposite side of the church today. You can tell that even online. And I have beside me our United States flag as uh, an additional reminder of this truth of where God has placed us. This blessings or the, this place where we have been given to live, uh, this nation of ours, comes also with its challenges. There are freedoms, and yet those freedoms also open up challenges for us so that as we live here, we want to be guided by God's Word. And so one of those places where we can go for guidance is seeing the prophet Jeremiah and how in a land that he was blessed to live in, blessed to be a part of the nation of Israel, he also had a calling and God strengthened him in his calling, not just as a citizen of the nation of Israel, but also a member of God's family. And so let's hear some of the trouble and trials that Jeremiah went through uh, in this sermon text for today and how he reacted to them here in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. Jeremiah says, you persuaded me, Lord, and I agreed to it. You are stronger than I, and you won out. I have become a laughingstock all day long, and everyone is mocking me whenever I speak. I cry out. I cry out violence and destruction. But the word of the Lord has brought scorn on me. I am mocked all day long. If I say... I will not mention him or speak his name anymore. Then there is a burning fire in my heart, shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in. I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. All my close friends, those who are watching for my fall, say, denounce him. Let's denounce him. Perhaps he can be pressured into making a mistake. Then we will have the upper hand against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a terrifying warrior, so my persecutors will stumble, and they will not gain the upper hand. They will be put to shame completely, because they have not been successful. Their eternal disgrace will never be forgotten. Lord of armies, you test the righteous. You see the heart and mind. Let me see your vengeance on them, for I have laid out my case before you. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the wicked. This is the word of our Lord. Dear friends in Jesus, freedom is a big word. This weekend, holiday celebration, the freedoms that we enjoy in many ways in, in this nation. We th are very thankful for religious freedom guaranteed in the Constitution of these United States of America. But what if, what if we did not have religious freedom? What if we were threatened by persecution for speaking God's word? What if we could be fined? or thrown in jail, or even beheaded for declaring what God says? What if that could be happened, not just for speaking some of the details of Scripture, but what if you could be condemned for identifying sin as sin? But will that answer to the what if? Well. It may be closer than we think, because while we're thankful for a constitution and a nation that defend religious freedom, that constitution is not guaranteed, not guaranteed to last forever. 
Rather, we have something from God that is declared to last forever. His, his words that are pro, uh, proclaimed, His words, His promises are not broken. And so even more than holding on to freedom guaranteed by a nation, we have some wonderful truths guaranteed by God's word. And so as we hear those words and review them, uh, thinking of these words from Jeremiah today, I want you to picture this gospel message of Jesus Christ, God's love for the world, God's love for sinners. Picture it the way Jeremiah does, as a fire burning in your heart. So as we think this through, maybe you can also find that fearless fire for, for God's word. You would expect that living in, in Israel, God's nation, uh, Jeremiah would have had the freedom uh, and benefited from the freedom to proclaim God's word without interruption. To have the support of the king of God's people, Israel, in his proclamation. But uh, just the opposite was the case. In fact, Jeremiah suffered many persecutions because he, he served under some of the last kings of Judah. And when Jeremiah would warn the people that destruction was coming upon God's nation because of their idolatry, well, the kings didn't like to hear it. One king even cut up one of the, the scrolls uh, from God's word that Jeremiah had dictated, and he burned the scraps after it was cut up. And just prior to the words of our text here in Jeremiah chapter 20, the chief officer of the temple of Jerusalem had Jeremiah beaten and locked up in chains because he was predicting Judah's captivity in Babylon. As a consequence of their idolatry, as a, as a result of their sinfulness, and so there were difficulties that came upon Jeremiah from proclaiming that word of God. Some of you might know that, that Jeremiah had a nickname, has a nickname for, for oftentimes by Bible scholars who want to bring home one of the major qualities of Jeremiah's preaching. He was the weeping prophet. Weeping because people didn't listen to the message he shared might think of the glory and the praise and the honor that comes from having a position as a spokesman of God. And maybe that's what Jeremiah was looking forward to as he started his ministry. But the Lord let him know pretty early on that that's not the way it was going to be. And yet, with all of those challenges and opposition that was facing him, he comes up in verse 7 here and describes what's happening. You persuaded me, Lord. And I agree to it. You are stronger than I, and you won out. He said, I'm not sure I wanted to do this, to go through all of this situation, but Lord, I, I went ahead because you called me, and you said you'd be with me to, to proclaim your message, to proclaim your word, so I've done it. You won out. But then the next verse, I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone is mocking me. Whenever I speak out, whenever I speak, I cry out. I cry out violence and destruction. But the word of the Lord has brought scorn on me. I am mocked all day long. He's weeping here, <laughs> stricken by grief. He's, he's a laughing stock, frustrated by the lack of positive results of his preaching. And he's angered by the response of a hostile response to the proclamation of the word. In effect, Jeremiah said, God, didn't you call me? Didn't you call me from a young age to proclaim your word? Was I just hearing things? Or didn't you say you were going to be with me and assure me that your authority was going to support my message? If this kind of ridicule and reproach and danger is what you set me apart for before I was born, God, maybe you shouldn't have bothered It was those self-doubts that he was facing because he had faced taunting and insults from the people who were around him. I hear many whispering, verse 10, tear on every side my close friends, those who are watching for me for my fall, say denounce him. Perhaps he can be pressured into making a mistake. 
They did everything they could to, to shut him up, to make him quiet so he would not share God's word. And, and you can see why the nation didn't want that to happen. He wasn't prophesying good times for the people of Israel, but captivity. And they wanted him to be quiet. And their animosity toward Jeremiah, it wasn't fueled by anything that Jeremiah had done. Everything that Jeremiah had spoken them was done, to them was done out of love from his heart. And truthfulness, sharing the truths of God's word. It's not like he had joined a rival gang. Or had swindled the nation out of money and gold. No, he was declaring the truth. The truth of how their sins had separated them from God. Sound familiar? The truth of sin separating us from God? If you've sat here in this <laughs> congregation more than once, you've probably caught on that we have to talk about this every day in worship. Every day, every time we gather in worship in God's house, we begin by confessing our sins, recognizing how we have not earned God's favor, recognizing how we deserve condemnation, just like the separation uh, and the captivity of Israel that those, those Old Testament Israelites deserved. We are called upon to proclaim that message of sin. And yet we meet response, and to re meet, re meet response in our own sinful nature that we'd rather not talk about it. I'd rather not identify sin as sin. I'd rather let it be swept under the rug. People would rather not hear about how they wronged God. How dare you correct me might be something we have heard when we share it. Um, because our sinful natures Rather than have the law identify what, uh, uh, be a mirror and identify our own wrongdoings, our sinful natures would rather compare ourselves to somebody else and think, well, I'm, I'm at least a bit better than they are, so God must be happy with me. But how false is that? We, we are not on God's good side because we are better than others. And society would think that same thing. As long as I'm being good to my neighbor and not hurting others, don't tell me I'm bad. So that's what society today also would want to tell us. How easy is it for you or for me to come out and explain clearly and declare that sexual relations outside of marriage is sinful. It goes against God's command. It's difficult because you meet opposition and someone says, you have no right to tell me that. We have no right to force that belief on them, but we have a right and a duty to declare the truth of God's word. That there is one place where God has designed within marriage for that sexual relationship to exist. And that blessing is there for us within marriage. And the list goes on for other ways that society would rather have Christianity keep its mouth shut. Just like Jeremiah, we can be sent to terror, to depression, to thinking we are a laughingstock because enemies cause us fear. And yet, I must proclaim the word. That's what Jeremiah basically says. I must proclaim the word of God. Jer Judah had hardened herself against God in, in Jeremiah's day. And then came the persecution against Jeremiah that almost shut him down. And he was tempted to close his mouth, to shut it all down and say, I'm not going to speak anymore. But listen to how he reacts to that thought in verse 9 with an if statement. If I stay, or if I say, I will not mention him or speak his name anymore, then there is a burning fire in my heart, shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in. I cannot. Jeremiah couldn't walk away from that call that he had. He couldn't keep it in. I want you to picture a fire in a box burning. 
Try to close up that fire inside of a box, and you cannot. Now, you close it up, it doesn't get oxygen, it, it might be able to put it out. But if that fire is burning inside of a box, it's going to get out. You can't close up this message that God has given to us. Because not only is that burning fire proclaiming the truth of God's word there, we have to let it out. We have a message that soothes. We have a message that answers the problem that our own sins have caused. That answers the problems that this world's sins have caused. We have the gospel of Jesus. So when we share that law of God, we also share the love of God. I cannot keep it in. And Jeremiah must speak the truth. The welfare of souls is at stake. He will share the law and he will share the gospel because people need it. Humanity, human need for repentance is precisely why we need people to proclaim the truths of God's word. And we need that when fellow Christians, I need that when a fellow Christian comes to me to correct me for a time that I was selfish or unthoughtful or whatever else falls in that list of sins. I need Christians to call me to repentance too. I need them even if it means sticking their neck out and identifying sin. My sin. And then I also have that need to proclaim the message of God's word and identifying the sins that, that surround us. As we grow in the image of God, as we grow in our understanding of the truths of his word, that fire in our hearts gets bigger and bigger. The knowledge and the zeal for us, for God's word, and for his love, and for his mercy, and his grace, and the peace that we have to it, as it gets bigger and bigger, we can't contain it. We must let it out. Also because not just do I need to let it out as, as a personal thing that I need to do, I need to let it out because the people around me need to hear it. You need to let it out because the people around you need to hear it. The people in our nation this United States of America need to benefit from the truth that while we have so many great blessings that we share as citizens here, we have an eternal blessing that goes beyond, uh, beyond anything we could have on this earth. We have an eternity of time with God. Time without end with God. Because Jesus our Savior has forgiven each and every one of our sins. We need to proclaim that message. And it's not easy. It's not easy, which is why Jeremiah is before us today. Um, sometimes I think back to how I was raised, and I think of the society around me, and in my thinking, it was a Christian nation in which I was raised. And a Christian nation was a great blessing, but I can think for the first decades of my life, I don't think I ever had anybody oppose my speaking of God's Word. Has it changed? Has it become different? I think it was just a, a, a little bit of a blessing that comes when God allows opposition to occur. I think when I was growing up it was easier for me to keep my mouth shut because I would just assume that everybody must believe what I believe. Or whatever other reason, I didn't stand up for the truth because I thought the truth was assumed. But when the opposition is there, opposition like Jeremiah faces, and God's word is belittled and to be just like any other piece of literature that is written by human hands, I cannot keep quiet. And what a blessing it is that persecution has not empowered me to persecute others back or to get angry and be mean in my response, but to look for the kindest and most faithful and respectful way to declare the truths of God's love, to declare the truths of God's word that still apply in this day and age. 
And we look for ways to do this kindly and lovingly, being faithful to the truths of God's love, but faithful also to, out of kindness, sharing God's love with our neighbor in a way that, that they might react to nicely, trying to share it out of concern, but being faithful to God's word. Listen to how Jeremiah is going about being faithful to God's word in the face of opposition. He says in verse 11, The Lord is with me like a terrifying warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and they will not gain the upper hand. <clears throat> when you think about sharing God's love and the difficulty in our nation and in our, in our society, and the, the importance of it, take this to heart too. You've got a fully armed Navy SEAL or United U.S. Marine at your back. Even better, that's the picture here. This terrifying warrior, he was the, the best armed soldier for protection. But Jeremiah wasn't talking about the armed soldiers of Israel. And we in this day are not talking about the soldiers that, that are armed to defend this nation and how grateful we are for them. Yes, we are grateful, but the terrifying warrior that you and I have at our backs, protecting us, is the great Lord who called us. The one who can bring us through the times of depression and the, the weakness and the times when we might prefer not to speak God's word. When we are chained up even because we're declaring God's word, God says, I'm still with you. And I am more powerful than they are. <clears throat> Keep on speaking that word. Don't contain it. Share that love of God. And so Jeremiah comes to the concluding verse of this scripture. And he couldn't contain it anymore. He has to, has to sing a song of praise, even though he's just been locked up and laughed at and ridiculed. He knows the Lord is with him, with his message. And he says, sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the wicked. That is the truth that Jeremiah declared that he had turned this despairing, complaining prophet into a joyful, confessing prophet. And it's still true for us today, that he can bring us to find that fearless fire for God's word, that we too may declare it. Amen.